<laughs> did you hear my stomach? I did. I think the country heard it. <laughs> I'm starving. Did you know I'm one of the country's largest suppliers of natural gas? <laughs> I did know. <laughs> I did know. Should we do a video? Yeah, I think we should. Okay. Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Firstly, a huge thank you to all of you who have subscribed and helped us hit the 1000 subs milestone. Woo! Yeah, that's a big deal to us. And whilst we're still a tiny channel in the virtual telly box, that is YouTube, just sitting here trying to imagine the 1400 or so of you who at the time of filming have subscribed is nuts. So thank you. It's bonkers. It's 1,400 people. Quite a lot of people. Imagine that. Oh, it's nothing on YouTube, I know. Like, you know, you're talking millions, yeah. but... They wouldn't fit in this room. No, 1,400 people. They definitely wouldn't. No? Well, they probably would. Like, a bit of squish, get a blender. Really, yeah. <laughs> Let's not blend our audience. <laughs> <laughs> this YouTube channel is blend-free. <laughs> yes. Now, of course, with the sharp increase in watch minutes we've seen, that means we can monetize the channel. Yay! Hey! <laughs> but we... <laughs> <laughs> But we don't want to get salesy and over commercial on this channel so we promise that we won't interrupt your viewing pleasure with a constant onslaught of advert fed up with your in the box mixes sounding cold digital and in need of that analog mojo a vintage character compressor can add at great digital we have the perfect solution for you and it's so easy to use Compresskimo, the intuitive compressor, can warm up your mixes with a simple drag of the central slider. All the way to the left, and we have the original cold, cold audio. Drag our little friend to the right, and you'll instantly hear your cold, harsh, digital audio warm up. Let's hear it in action. Additional controls tell Compreskimo just how cold your original audio is. From the Siberian towns of Omsk to Tomsk. And over to the right, we can select the character of the warmth we want to add, from Pasto to Keto, right on the equator. That's it. It's that simple. Say goodbye to cold, digital mixes with Compreskimo, the intuitive compressor plugin from Great Digital. If you're a stress-free Super Pack subscriber, you'll find it ready to go today, right inside your gobbledygook account. It couldn't be easier. Compressimo, the intuitive compressor from Great Digital. Verts and promotional garb, and any revenue we get from the channel will be ploughed straight back into gear to review and giveaways for you lot. Let's not get distracted by ads. Having trouble getting funky? You need the one chord cup funk chord pack. We took simple seventh chords and removed the root, that's the bass player's job. Then we removed the fifth, that's the guitar rock gods. Then we added the nine and raised it up one to bring you the one chord cup funk chord pack. Look at what happened when I tried to get funky. But then I downloaded the one chord cup funk chord pack and this happened. With nifty use of the transpose function, you needn't ever use another chord again. The one chord cup funk chord pack gives you this chord and 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 Just look at me now! The one chord cup funk chord pack! Only 99.99.99! Get yours today! Let's not get distracted by ads. Let's keep productivity up, people. Which segues us nicely into the sponsor for this video. Fed up with your productivity being interrupted by constant distractions, then you need Productivity, the productivity app. Productivity is a simple app that runs seamlessly in the background of your operating system and ensures that you stay on top of your creative game distraction-free. Fancy that quick game of cod piece war fuck before lunch? Perhaps your phone is begging you to check your Instaface notifications. Well, those days are gone. Productivity works by simply deleting your operating system if it detects more than three seconds of inactivity. Hospital calling just as you reach the pinnacle of automation success in the second chorus. Productivity won't let that be a distraction anymore. With up to three pre-selectable time-limited wee breaks per day, productivity ensures you stay on the ball and don't head off for a cheeky wank when you've done your number one. Need a poo? Should have gone before you went to work. Pesky delivery turned up. Ah, the neighbours will take that in. 
productivity runs 24 seven. So it won't even let sleep get in the way of your creative <laughs> success. Productivity, a distraction free creative mindset awaits. And you can get 40% off of productivity by following the link in the description below. We've had some great comments and questions over the past couple of weeks. And so we're gonna answer some of them in this video. Hooray! Yay! <laughs> now I need the iPad. Whoa. Thanks. How does this work? There we are. So let's kick off with a question from Nicholas Secretin. Secretin, sorry if I pronounce it wrong. Hey, loving your channel. Big ups for the 1000 subs. Yeah. Hey. I would love to see more stuff on mastering. I'm seriously getting into mastering, but even if I'm in the box, I'm always looking out for interesting, affordable gear that could be used on mastering. Any ideas? I think this should probably be your field of expertise. Yeah, everyone's a have a go bloody master and engineer these days, aren't they? No, seriously, that's fine. But it depends what you're doing. So if you're doing your own stuff, um, I'd say, well, just don't master your own stuff for obvious reasons um, to kick off with. But if you're doing other people's stuff, then what I do, and if you haven't seen this channel before, I'm generally mastering full time and not doing a lot else other than these YouTube videos these days. There's two distinct camps that I get music from. I get music from labels and I get music from independent amateur, if you will, artists. With the labels, my job is to do absolutely the bare minimum, so as little as possible. Someone has done a fantastic mix, it's a commercial mix, it's a great mix. My job is not to break their mix. I don't want to put my own stamp on it, I don't want to run it through tape saturation plugins or any kind of bollocks like that. It's my job just to present it for distribution in absolutely the best way to make sure the band are happy, the label are happy, that I'm happy, that you know everyone's. It's a quality control thing. It's a last final check of the mix. If the mix engineer's been mixing on, I don't know, Yamaha NS10s in a bedroom with a massive boost at 80 hertz or something, and the bass end is all over the place, then it's my job to have a good enough monitoring system to hear that and to be able to correct it. So what I would suggest to you, Nicholas, is that if you're working predominantly in the box, I'd say stay predominantly in the box. And if you let us know, let us know in the comments below this video what you're working on at home. So what monitors you've got, what kind of environment are you in? Are you in a commercial studio? Are you in a bedroom? Are you in a garage? Um, if you're in a home setting, then I'd say spend as much money as you can on monitors and acoustics and don't worry about anything else. There's nothing really these days that you can't do in the box. Um, that you, you know, There's no kind of silver bullet hardware piece that will make your masters sound fantastic. And there shouldn't be. Historically, mastering hardware like Masalek EQs, Vice EQs are very, very super transparent because it's our job to not color people's mixes unless the mix requires coloring which is more of the sort of working with the amateur mixers mindset but certainly a professional mastering engineer isn't going to be you know looking for super color boxes or stuff like that that's a that's a mixed bus job really so if you are doing amateur stuff then probably look at some of the Tegla units because they're fantastic maybe the SSL Fusion something like that I mean none of these are cheap they're all sort of well into four figures um, but I'd say my advice would be spend your money on monitors and stay in the box. Pretty good answer. Uh, moving on to the next one uh, this was a comment on a video that we did very recently comparing these two boxes now this is the Solid State Logic SSL2 and the Audient ID14 both of which are two in two out give or take with some various ADAP magic going on. Uh, audio interfaces, great value. And we did a video basically comparing them. And we got the following comment on that video. May I use the SSL2 as a digital analog audio converter connected to my iMac to listen to online music and the music saved in the computer and listen on headphones on the SSL2? Now that question was from Ming Z or Ming Z, however you say it. Uh, that is a really good question. And that's quite an easy one to answer. Um, so basically when you have these uh, audio interfaces plugged in. As a default, you can select on whatever operating system uh, that you're on, Windows, Mac, Linux, as far as I know as well. Um, you can set these as the main system output. So anything that goes out of your computer, whether you're on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, whatever you're using, even gaming, stuff like that, you can have this as your main output. So no matter what you're listening on, you should be able to hear it. If you can't, there's probably something going on in the Windows settings. You might just need to select but mm. in general you should be able to use it um, there are one or two 
bits of software, especially for the Audient one, that you would need to download in order to get full control. But as a standalone product, it seems to do the job for getting a, the audio a, out. Yeah, as a playback device, you don't need anything at all. You only really need the Audient control if you want to use TalkBack and stuff exactly. like that. But I've plugged this directly into my iPad. This is USB-C directly on the back. You get a USB-C cable in the box. I've plugged this straight into my iPad, loaded up Spotify, press play, bang. It's coming out of this without having to change any settings at all. The iPad's just automatically picked up that I've plugged an interface in and assumed I want to use it. Um, so, yeah, and the, again, the same with the ID the 14. You can, if you get a USB C to USB, is that B yep. cable? Again, you can plug that straight into a to an iPad. You can use it to record straight into GarageBand. On the Audion, if you want to use phantom power on the mics, you need the external power adapter plugged in. I don't know how that works over USB-C with phantom power, I'm guessing an iPad's going to, it's USB-C, so an iPad's going to power yeah, it, isn't it? Power. It just might drain the battery a bit quicker. Yeah. So it is usable on any device and you should be able to get audio fairly easy out of those. Uh, next up, another comment on the same video, this one from uh, Giuliano or Giano, sorry if I pronounce it wrong. Uh, in both of these units are the same converters, the exact same ones. You showed a scenario that's pretty unrealistic, but get it right, it's the analog hardware that's different, not the converters. Duh, with the duh in huge capitals. <laughs> uh, right, so as I say, this was a comparison between the two of these to, to see which sounds better in this studio environment, which has better outputs, what affects the audio. And let's cover the first point of that first, the converters. Now, you know a bit about what's inside these. Yeah, so the Audion, and they make a big thing of this on their website, this contains Burr Brown converter chipsets. Um, so if you go to Audion's website, it's clear as day. As soon as you select the page for the ID14, you'll see, you know, we use Burr Brown chipsets in this. They make a big point of that. The SSL uses AKM, I is think it? That's right. AKM chipsets, um, which are different. So in your comment, you said that they use exactly the same converters. They don't. So, you know, before you comment on stuff like this, just have a look at the company's websites and just make sure that what you're typing in capital letters is actually true, because that has completely different converters to that. And the second point to that, uh, you showed it in a scenario that's pretty unrealistic. Now, I do agree with that. It was completely unrealistic yeah, and very ridiculous. unrealistic. Uh, so for those of you that haven't seen the video, what we did is we plugged the output to the input of each device and recorded out of logic back in again and basically measured the change between the two. But the only real way we could measure the difference was to do it 500 times per unit. So we sat there for a good three, four days, recording in and out of Logic, the same audio file over and over again, um, basically to see how they color or damage or affect in any way the audio that's coming in and out. Uh, it was quite an interesting experiment. It definitely had some very, very audible effects. Well, definitely, especially after 500 round trips, which again, you'd never do in the real world. Which but is why it's unrealistic. This technically has the best converters in terms of chipset out of the two, but this performed the worst after 500 round trips. So that goes to show that it's not about the chipset necessarily, it's about the analog electronics surrounding the chipset. And most people that know a lot about converters will tell you that that's the case. All the converter's really doing is converting the signal into noughts and ones or noughts and ones into the signal. It's the electronics and the circuitry around those converters that are actually really doing the work. Um, so this, even though it's got the inferior converters, so this has actually got the same converter chipset as the ID4, which is this one's baby brother. Um, it, this just came off better, but only after 500 round trips. And the reason we did the 500 round trips is because when you plug these in side by side and flick between them, they are so good that I would quite happily do a mix having my left speaker powered by this and my right speaker powered by that. That's how close they are. They're really they are bang, aren't they? So we had to, you know, do an extreme test to really get a flavour for what each box was was actually doing to the audio. And of course, you can measure that kind of stuff on EQ curves and all that kind of stuff. But it, it's just interesting to hear after 500 unrealistic trips in and out, has it lost all the bass? Has it put a load of treble in, etc.? Yeah. And it's just good to hear what it's doing, even if in one trip in and out, that's such a minuscule amount. It's just good to know what's going on, really. It's the cumulative effect of the 
the the analog exactly. electronics and the converters of each unit and if you watch our other youtube videos you'll know that we like to the easiest thing to do with an audio interface shootout is to put a vocal in one channel and an acoustic guitar in the other channel and la, 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 la. and everyone does that if you watch our channel you know that we like to do stuff slightly differently and so that just seemed a different way to to get a flavor for for each unit yep uh, okay, so a next one from a bit on the negative side. Here's one from a very upset Cali Fortune on these uh, these parts of our 1176 shootout video. In fact, the 1176 with its super fast attack time can flatten the curve so effectively and so quickly, I'm surprised Trump didn't suggest using them to combat COVID-19 rather than suggesting swallowing a flashlight or injecting yourself with bleach. Oops. At first I was like, oh, this is cool, and I subbed. But as soon as the Trump joke started, I unsubbed. Keep the politics to yourself, thank you. Uh, next up, Warren Hewitt. I've heard of him. I have as well. Uh, <laughs> he comments on our sample rate video. Another fantastic video, Mark. Marvellous work. It's very kind. Thank you very Great. much, Thank Warren. You, Warren. Actually, Warren commented on a lot of our videos as well, and he did ask me to send him an email. So maybe there's a Produce Like a Pro collab or something like that coming up in the future. Not sure, but we'd be very excited to do something like that if you're watching, Warren. I've sent you an email, so check your emails. Goodness, it's 2020, man. It's not 1996 <laughs> anymore. And <laughs> we'd love to work with you. Anyway. We would. Next. <laughs> Next up, okay. Uh, Sign comments on our first news episode. Bollocks on the monitors. It's probably your hearing with the Neumanns. Save on the ATC fanboy preach and sort the room out and learn using reference is a solid, surefire way. Get it flat, get it right. Not everyone is going to listen back on a hi-fi either. Tosh. <laughs> you call what him amazing Tosh insult. Did he call us Tosh? I don't know. Tosh. That's a great word anyway. I'm going to use Tosh. that more often. Yeah. Thanks for the great word. Present Tosh. day Tosh. That's brilliant. So we replied to that and just said, I think um, something like, you know, we've we've spent quite a lot of money on acoustic treatment in here. I'm definitely not deaf, as lots of my clients will tell you. Um, and we've spent quite a bit of money and two years getting the acoustics right in both this room and our main control room. Um, so, yeah, it's not quite sure what he's on about there. But anyway, he followed that up with... My room is 40 years of experience, having worked on Rockfields, SSLs and vintage Neves. You clearly don't have a leg to stand on with inquiring about acoustics. I can advise you to go to the BBC studio in Swansea to hear the room through as my room is one room and I wouldn't suggest ATC hi-fi speakers to the present day production Bedroom Massive. Uh, <laughs> though, oh boy, we are the Bedroom Massive. We are the Bedroom Massive. So um, yeah, well, we cut, you know a lot of our viewers are the bedroom massive, and that's fine. I started off in a bedroom in 1986. 1901. Got 1901. Yeah, chiselling vocals out on stone tablets. Um, yeah, what was the bit about? Uh, I don't really understand most of this. My I'm room is 40 sure. years of experience. Well, no, it isn't. You either got a f***ing room or you haven't. So you know, my question was, show us your room. Show us what you've done with your acoustic treatment. Um, but. Yeah, he could know. My room is 40 years experience. Having worked on Rockfields SSLs, vintage needs, you clearly don't have a leg to stand on with inquiring about acoustics. So I don't really understand that bit. I think what you're saying is I haven't got a clue what I'm talking about when it comes to acoustics. Um, yeah. And that's fair enough. That's a valid point. Um, although I have built 19 studios from the ground up now from... Um, small garage studios to big commercial facilities. Um, and I've worked including this one including this one um, and i've worked for the largest independent tv broadcasting and film studio in the country for quite a few years and i've worked out of bbc made a veil and media city in manchester and broadcasting house in london not bbc swansea though as well as having worked in most of the major studios in london so hopefully i've got a rough idea of what i'm talking about when it comes to acoustics but apparently i haven't but anyway let's not dwell on the negative what I'd like you to do is justify your comments, especially in terms of I wouldn't suggest ATC hi-fi speakers to the present day bedroom massive though, oh boy. So I wanna know why you wouldn't recommend ATC hi-fi speakers. If you wouldn't recommend ATC hi-fi speakers, that's a fairly valid point. But what I like is when people comment on things like that, if they tell me why, why wouldn't you recommend ATC hi-fi speakers? I would and they're actually behind me. I don't know if you can see them in here, but they're actually behind us. And they're bloody fantastic. 
And if you've got a thing against hi-fi speakers in studios generally, but yet you've got something to do with BBC Swansea, well, a lot of the BBC broadcasting houses have used hi-fi speakers for years as monitoring. The Rogers LS59, they've used Proac hi-fi speakers. A lot of mastering engineers I know use B&W hi-fi speakers. Abbey Road exclusively use B&W hi-fi speakers. A lot of guys I know use Harbeth hi-fi speakers. They're great. Again, Proac stuff. There's a lot of crossover between really good hi-fi speakers and really good studio monitors. And it's the same with the ATC range. The only difference you're really getting with the studio range is of fug ugly black cabinet. Whereas with the hi-fi speakers, you're getting, you know, a nicer wood finish. So anyway, let, I, don't, you know, I don't want to pick an argument or anything, but if, if you don't like ATC hi-fi speakers, let us know why. Let us know what your experience is. Let us know why I suck at room acoustics and what you're doing with your gaff put some videos on your channel so as we can see it and understand it. Um, and if you could arrange a tour around BBC Swansea, if it's really that good, then we'd love to come and do a video there. So see if you can sort that out and give us a shout. And finally, one more on the interface comparison video again, Ruben Acciano, again, sorry if I pronounced it wrong, uh, quiet disagreement on the software bundles. Uh, the SSL native plugins are amazing and alone worth the cost of the unit. That the SSL2 is so easy to use and sounds so great for so little cost is the icing on the cake. The 4K thing may be gimmicky, but it adds a lovely lift to a dark mic, say a ribbon on a guitar cab where you won't also notice the extra distortion. Good times for recording on a budget. Indeed, and yet we didn't actually mention it. We mentioned the audience software because that comes with a great <laughs> little software sort of monitoring program for sorting out your talkback and selecting what the functionality of the the encoder there does. Um, we didn't mention the SSL software because it doesn't actually come with any control software per se, but yes, you're absolutely right. It does come with a pretty fantastic set of plugins at the moment, which do justify the, the, the expense of the unit. The reason we didn't, well, we did mention those. I think we said they're listed on the manufacturer's website and you can go and see what comes with it, but that does quite often change from time to time. Sometimes a manufacturer might offer a different plug-in bundle with their units, depending on what the competition are doing and stuff like that. So we gave a mention to the Audient, which I think comes with no actual plugins. I don't think so. At all. Again, you'd have to check an Audient's website. It may have um, changed. Yeah. But yes, the SSL does come with a fantastic suite of plugins and we didn't mention that at all. So apologies about that. Um, another reason as well is a lot of people have already got the SSL plugins. I know we have. Um, and if you've got anything sort of universal audio, you get all the SSL stuff. Um, the Slate bundle's got some SSL alike kind of. So there's a lot of it about. So it might be of some value to, to some and not to others. And just touching on the uh, the 4K thing may be gimmicky, but it does add a lovely lift to a dark mic. Yeah, there are times when you'd use it, times when you wouldn't. It's entirely case dependent, really. I mean, it's a good feature to have if you like just adding that bit of sparkle, bit of SSL mojo. Yeah. It does the job. Yeah. You wouldn't use it on everything. Um, I mean, we've got in our control room the Focusrite Claret 8 Pre-X, and that's got something very similar. It's got the air function. Mm. So on each of the eight preamps on the unit, it's got an added almost treble lift that emulates the original Focusrite console. Um, never use it. I no. mean, it's cool to have. We used it a lot when we first got it, but we found that we were then just ducking the treble on everything we recorded because it was too bright. So it's kind of case dependent, really. If you want something bright, stick it on. Don't use it all the time. Yeah, well, it's, it's a useful like, feature. It's like Ruben says, it's really good. It's a really good feature to have if you want to brighten a slightly darker mic. Mm. Um, but then, I mean, I don't do much recording these days, but then when I do, if I want, if I'm using a slightly darker mic and it's too dark, then I'll change the mic um, because this will add some kind of distortion yep. when you're adding the 4K. Whereas the Focusrite Air won't; it just tends to give it a, a lift in the treble. Um, but but yeah, no, it's a great point. You can use this to to brighten up a dark mic or just get a slightly fuller, more forward sound, which is what it's designed to do. So great comment. Thanks for that, Ruben. So thanks for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. And thanks again for letting us reach a thousand subscribers. It's Yay. really good. It makes us happy and feel warm and tingly, which is all good. Uh, <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed our videos. Uh, please like and subscribe. And uh, what's the other thing I say? Don't forget to sign up to productivity. Oh, you yeah. definitely want that in your workflow environment for your next project. I don't know why I went all Australian there. <laughs> what's that thing you, what's the thing you say at the end of the video? Oh, uh, ding the ding dong. Ding that you're the bloody ding dong. I am. Ding the ding dong. Thanks, everyone. See you soon.